Hey, Jessica. <laughs> you were waiting for me to say something, weren't you? Yeah. <laughs> okay, we're here. And we're <laughs> answering questions today. Awesome. And they are uncomfortable questions. <sighs> questions that people have about their pets that they don't necessarily want to just ask in public. Okay. So they come to this forum, and this is for everybody. You come to this forum. For everybody. And, yeah, you can just post them. You can send her questions. Post them below, do whatever, and she's going to answer them. And man, we got some good ones for you today. I'm telling you, I was reading through these, and I'm thinking, whoever came up with these, they got some good questions. Really <laughs> Great. Good. So, um, are you ready to get started? I'm ready. Okay. Let's do it. And we'll just go dive right into it, if that's okay. Yeah. All right. So, why does my dog, this is from Jennifer, Jennifer. why does my dog get scared when he hears lightning or fireworks? Okay, that is a good question. And so, I mean, it's it's a very natural thing for a dog to be afraid of loud noises that you know, there's no rhyme or reason to the noise. They don't know what's going on, why this noise is happening. And you're right, it's usually a thunderstorm or could could be lightning as well because it's it's a it's a bright light that seemingly comes out of nowhere. It could, and it definitely could be fireworks. So fireworks actually kind of mimic a thunderstorm to a dog. And this is something that is just genetically ingrained in our dogs be, from being wild. Because if you think about wild animals out in a thunderstorm, the first sign of a storm coming what do wild animals do? They scurry off and find cover because it is dangerous to be out in a storm. They could get struck by lightning. There could be flash flooding. A tree could fall down. I mean, there's so much danger going on inside of a storm that just naturally wild animals know to take cover from a storm. So dogs have that same feeling. If a storm is coming, if lightning and thunder is going on outside, they're scared because even though they're, they, they may be in the house, they're still scared because all of these things could happen. And these, uh, this anxiety and this fear can certainly be exacerbated if your dog is, has ever been stuck outside during a storm or even if something has happened to your house during a storm in the past where maybe a tree fell on it or even just the power going out. That, that can be scary because of all the emotions going on inside of the house with the family. And fireworks mimic that. It's, uh, you know, loud noises and bright lights out of nowhere that seem, seems like a thunderstorm to them. So they're trying to take cover. It's very scary. And fireworks can be even scarier because they're louder, because they're more erratic. The noises are definitely much more erratic than a regular thunderstorm. So it's like a thunderstorm on steroids to them. So if your dog has any sort of noise, phobias or fears, or has um, any anxieties with storms or fireworks, it's definitely something you want to prepare for in advance. Um, keep track of the weather and any holiday that you know fireworks just come along with, make sure to prepare in advance. I actually have another video on my channel on what you can do uh, during thunderstorm, prior, you know, preparing for um, either thunderstorms or fireworks and what you should be doing during a storm or fireworks going off. So I will link that below because it would make this video really long if I went over all of that. So I do hope that answered your question, Jennifer. Thank you so much for submitting it. Okay, that was a great <laughs> answer. I know that's gonna help out a lot of people. Awesome. And I always wondered that too. It's like, my God, it's just fireworks, no <laughs> deal. But now it makes total sense now that you say it that way. Okay, so this is a really good one. And I think a lot of people, you know, I, I kind of got an idea that this may be wrong, but I'm going to go ahead and ask you the question. Okay. Why are pit bulls such mean dogs? Oh, um, yeah, it is wrong. It's completely wrong. So, in fact, pit bulls, historically, were known as nanny dogs. They are incredibly loyal, very gentle. They are strong. They have big builds, and they are very strong animals, but they're you know, historically known as nanny dogs because they looked after and protected the children in the home. Pit bulls have been nanny dogs for centuries and even up until like the 50s and 60s. Um, if you remember back to the Little Rascals, the dog Petey in Little Rascals was a 
pit bull type dog and he was just a sidekick <laughs> to the little rascals so that really wasn't that long ago and you'll find you know black and white pictures from the early 1900s of children little babies with pit bulls because that that was their role in the home they were very gentle loving animals who protected the children so uh, it really wasn't that long ago that they weren't thought of this way. Uh, very unfortunately, some not so nice people um, decided to, because they are very strong animals and they are very loyal animals, they will do what you tell them to do. Um, they're very easy to train because they're very loyal. Some people decided to train them to fight uh, for sport. It's very unfortunate, very sad, um, and I don't want to go into the whole idea, or, you know, everything that goes into dog fighting because it's it, it's very sad. If you there's plenty of information online about it. If you want to look uh, look it up even more, um, I know very famously Michael Vick was incarcerated for uh, uh, dog fighting and some other things that were associated with that. So th and that's really where the bad rap kind of comes from, but really these dogs are very kind, very soft hearted, very good natured, um, very loyal, very easy to train. They just happen to be also very strong and very muscular uh, in a it, their build is very muscular. So that's kind of where people get this idea that they're not good dogs. They are amazing dogs. They are excellent dogs. They are great family dogs. They are really good with children. Um, you just have to show them the right way. It, a dog isn't inherently bad. People can make a dog bad by how they treat the dog. And that's that's the differentiation. Um, people, people chose pit bulls because of their strong build and turned some pit bulls uh, mean because of how they were treated. So it was very unfortunate. I personally don't like to think of it very uh, much because it is very sad. But that's, that's the story in a nutshell. They are not mean dogs. They are very so soft-hearted, kind dogs, very loyal, very easy to train. So um, if you are considering adopting one, I hope you do so. Wow, that's good to hear. So that, you know, when people go down the street now and they see a pit bull, you know, next to somebody, they're not going to be freaking out. No, I mean, they don't, don't freak, freak out, out over <laughs> poodles. They don't freak out over chihuahuas, do they? Nope. And they probably should freak out For over a chihuahua. chihuahua. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah. We had one, man. Those things could be tough old dogs. <laughs> All right. So, oh my God, this one, this one, Jessica. This is one that I think every dog owner has seen at some point. Okay. And I think people are looking for one answer. I don't think there is, but maybe you'll expand right. on this. Okay. Why does a dog rub his butt on my carpet? Oh my goodness. So, yes, dogs rubbing their butt on the carpet. Some people think it's funny. Um, it can be very embarrassing if it happens in front of company, guests in your house. It, there isn't one answer to it. Um, the first thing I would say, if your dog was recently groomed, there could be some like nicks or scratches from grooming tools, uh, especially if clip clippers were used around their bottom. That could be what's going on. It could be itchy or uh, painful, uncomfortable because they actually have some injury from grooming. That happens. But uh, more often than not, it has to do with their anal glands or anal sacs. And what these are, they're two little pockets on either side of their anus. And it basically contains, it holds like this really kind of fishy, foul, um, oily kind of liquid. And its purpose is to be excreted, expelled, when your dog defecates. It's in, it's releasing all sorts of scents and pheromones. It's letting other animals in the area know, like, this dog was here, what's going on with this dog, you know, providing a lot of cues for other animals that happen to come along and, and are curious about what other animals uh, have recently been in the area. Um, so anyway, your dog has uh, anal glands. Every dog does. And there could be a few things going on with their anal glands. If your dog is scooting on the carpet, I definitely recommend first and foremost that you take your dog to see your veterinarian. The anal glands are naturally expressed when your dog has a bowel movement. So if your dog 
maybe isn't receiving appropriate their appropriate diet that they should be having if your dog's diet isn't completely balanced or they're not receiving all the nutrients they should be getting if your dog's bowel movements are maybe too soft or too liquidy, if they have diarrhea because they have an upset stomach, their anal glands are not going to express appropriately because that friction that's needed <laughs> to express the anal glands isn't there. So it could be that their anal glands are full and they need to be manually expressed. It could be that uh, their anal glands have been manually expressed and have been expressed too often and they're very sensitive. So they could be uh, damaged and inflamed. It could be that their anal glands have gotten infected. Um, we had a chihuahua who even though we were feeding her a biologically appropriate diet, she still had, later in the later years, she still had issues with her anal glands and we did have to take her to the vet um, just about once a month to have her anal glands expressed. But the reason we found this out um, she, she was fine her whole life and then all of a sudden one day we noticed she was scooting and we took her to um, the emergency vet because she was scooting and when we looked she actually had like what looked like an abscess on her rear end and it turned out we went to the emergency vet that her anal gland had had ruptured and gotten an infection um, again she had been fine for years and all of a sudden this happened so definitely if your dog is scooting on the carpet a vet checkup is recommended uh, it, it's something that can just happen out of nowhere it's something that uh, your dog could have issues with because of diet. It's something that your dog could have issues with because uh, groomers tend to express anal glands and they're kind of rough about it and maybe your dog doesn't need their anal glands expressed. If your dog is perfectly healthy and um, having normal bowel movements, you don't need to manually express a dog's anal glands. It happens naturally, um, but some groomers are not taught that. They're just taught always to express them. So there's a lot of things that could be going on, but generally it does have to do with their anal glands, which is why this question or more likely the answer was a little uncomfortable but that is what it is so definitely um, call your vet and get your dog in for a checkup if that's happening <laughs> oh I do want to add one other thing though because sometimes your dog could have just had a bowel movement and got some stuck on their fur and they're trying to get it off so you definitely want to check and make sure you um, that you've got your dog all cleaned up and then check their anal glands. <laughs> Jessica, this has been awesome. I really appreciate you taking out time for this. I know you help out a lot of people, but guys, you gotta put your questions down there. You have to, have to do this. Everybody has questions about their pet and they don't have somebody to turn to, but you do now. You've got Jessica. She's here every week to answer your questions. She's not gonna miss a week. <laughs> she's gonna do this no matter what. I don't know if she's gonna do it on the road, but we're traveling soon, so maybe she'll even do it on the road. That would be really cool. Um, but you know, it's just some simple questions, guys. Submit those questions, give them to Jessica, she'll help you out. And Jessica, if they wanna get more you know, information, maybe they need training for their dog or whatever, where could they turn to if they wanna get more information from you? Yeah, definitely, like, like you said, post any comments or questions down below in the comment section below this video. Um, if you are looking for more information, first of all, my YouTube channel has tons of great videos that, I mean, just search. My channel, if you have a question, more than likely I have answered it in some way, shape, or form. Um, there's also linked right down below in the description of this video, a my beginner dog training series. So I definitely recommend you go through that playlist and work with your dog. You're gonna see incredible results just from going through that. But some dogs need, some pet parents, need a little bit more guidance from than that. So I also have a book that you can get. You can get a digital copy of my book. It's super inexpensive. That's also linked in the description below. And I have online video courses that help you with your dog training and how to feed your dog and so much more. Definitely check that out. It's also linked in the description. And I also have an Amazon storefront with all of my favorite pet products I put together just for you. So check the description. That is also linked below. All of those are available to you. Plus, I almost forgot my group. Yes, you can join the group, join the family. There are thousands of pet parents in the group just waiting for you to join. You can share pictures of your pets. You can share videos of your pets. You can ask questions. You can help answer other people's questions. I'm also in the group to help answer your questions. We're all waiting for you to join, so I don't know why you haven't joined yet. <laughs> all 
All right, guys, I am going to wrap up this video, but thank you so much for being here. Go ahead and give this video a big thumbs up. It is the best compliment you can give, and I really hope you do give it. Also, if you look right down there and that subscribe button is red, go ahead and click it. Turn it gray when it happens. A bell will appear. Click the bell, select all notifications. That way, YouTube can notify you every time I post a new video. And there's going to be another video popping up right about here. Definitely recommend you check that out next. It's going to help build that bond with you and your dog. Thanks so much for being here, and I will see you in the next video. Hey, thanks for watching. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel so you never miss another video.